These are the three best gene editing stocks, in my opinion, because remember, I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice. I've been investing in gene editing stocks for a number of years now, and it's really tested my patience, having had to wait three or four years for any real action. Finally, last year, up steps Kathy Wood, famous for her bullish calls on Tesla, and she says that she thinks gene editing will be the biggest growth industry of the decade, and finally, off they went. However, despite a lot of good news for the sector, the broader market has undergone a huge rotation out of growth stocks and into cheaper and safer value names, causing a lot of volatility amongst all speculative stocks, including almost all within the gene editing space. This volatility often causes the market to become really out of sync and many stocks get unfairly brought down with the rest of the market and this creates great opportunities for us as investors. I've done a lot of research into the gene editing sector and I'm going to talk about eight stocks in the space, three of which I'm going to cover right now. These are the three leaders within the gene editing industry and I'm going to tell you a bit more about them and how high I think their stocks can go. I'm not really one for surprises, I'm just going to say that I expect number three on this list to at least 10x. First up is CRISPR Therapeutics, ticker CRSP. I am going to refer to them as CRSP instead of shorting in it to CRISPR as that would just get super confusing given that CRISPR is the name of the main technology within this industry. So it's kind of like if Apple decided to call themselves smartphone or if Burger King called themselves... Burger King. Anyway, CRSP has been the biggest and most valuable company in this industry for a number of years, and that's thanks to their partnership with pharmaceutical giant Vertex. This partnership has given them a financial advantage over their key rivals, Adidas and Intellia, which has allowed them to invest and hire the best talent, as well as fund and rapidly advance their clinical trials in a bid to beat those peers to the market. This is extremely important because whoever gets to the market first will be able to negotiate multi-year partnerships with their enterprise clients and that'll give them a huge foothold in the space. Right now, the company's most advanced treatment is called CTX001, and it's aimed at treating sickle cell disease, but the company is in a foot race with rival Adidas Medicine. However, CRSP now has double the amount of researchers and scientists than Adidas, and that's thanks to that investment from Vertex, and therefore it is looking likely that they will get to the market first and potentially take a much larger portion of the pie. Not only does it look like CRSP will get to market first, but that partnership with Vertex will help the business manufacture and commercialize those treatments, which gives them another significant advantage. If that wasn't enough, unlike some of their peers, CRISPR Therapeutics is performing global trials rather than just say in the US or like Europe. So when they do get the green light on any one of their treatments, they'll have multiple markets to go after straight away. CRISPR Therapeutics is focusing 50% of its research towards oncology treatments and 50% on rare diseases such as sickle cell and beta thalassemia. The company is getting close to a major breakthrough with the latter, but their oncology programs are still around two or three years away from advanced trials. That said, if CTX001 does prove to be successful in treating rare diseases, then their oncology programs CTX120 and CTX130 as treatments for cancer and more specifically solid tumors will begin to look really exciting. In fact, in research for this video, I did find out that 80% of cancers are actually solid tumors. So the total addressable market for CRISPR therapeutics is ginormous, but Far more importantly, it would just be unbelievable if they were to find a way of curing 80% of cancers. From a valuation perspective, the stock looks pretty enticing after falling almost 50% as part of the growth stock sell-off. Along with a recent rally for industry peer Intellia, CRSP is no longer the largest gene editing stock by market cap, and that's despite having the strongest financials and pipeline in the space, and therefore I do think the stock is quite well valued, giving it a real competitive advantage and leadership position. Next up on the list is one that I've mentioned in the video already, and that is Intellia Therapeutics, otherwise known as NTLA. This was the first gene editing stock that I ever invested in back in 2017, and I've had to wait patiently for almost three years as the stock traded sideways until the whole industry took off in 2020, following that positive coverage from Kathy Wood at ARK Invest. Despite a very good year, NTLA has historically lagged peers like CRSP and Adesis due to slower sales growth 
a lack of funding and a string of high profile departures amongst its management team. However, the reason I invested in NTLA back in 2017 and not their competitors was actually because the company was founded and being run by a lady called Jennifer Doudner and she co-discovered the CRISPR technology that this industry is being built on. When Doudner won the Nobel Prize for her discovery only eight months ago, the stock Intellia took off like a rocket and has now climbed over 600% in a year, whilst other gene editing companies like CRSP and Adidas have only climbed around 40%. The recent outperformance for NTLA stock is not just the Downer effect, but they also reported revolutionary data in June, and that's from a phase one trial where they successfully edited DNA within the liver. This really is a landmark proof of concept for NTLA's technology, and it's made the stock a more enticing investment for those who need some assurance before investing in such a highly speculative space. Right now, Intelli is attractive to investors because it perhaps carries less risk than others that have yet to produce such positive data, and they clearly have a unique advantage given their ties to Jennifer Downer. Being part owned by such an industry pioneer and a famous Nobel Prize winner will do NTLA favours in terms of their branding or perhaps as they seek funding and partnerships. However, they are now the most richly valued company in the space by market cap, and that's despite having lower sales and a weaker pipeline of trials versus some of their peers. This is a tricky one to recommend right now, and it comes down to how much you value the Dowdner effect. Perhaps watch one of her TED Talks or even her recent podcast with Dilda deGrasse Tyson, you'll get a bit more of a view on her. Number three on my list is Adidas Medicine. And I think I've saved the best till last here, at least from a valuation perspective and possible return on investment. Adidas Medicine makes up the last of the three leaders in the gene editing space. And despite being valued greater than CRSP back in 2016 and more than Intellia for pretty much most of the last five years, Adidas is now worth about a quarter as much as their rivals. And that's despite having pretty much the same technology and a similar pipeline of trials. Of course, there's only so much money that people want to invest in highly speculative industries. And given that CRSP has that partnership with Vertex and Intellia is riding a tsunami of good news from trials to Nobel Prizes, it seems like the money has all gone to one side of the ship. This has been exacerbated further by algorithms and momentum traders that just chase those high flying stocks. And I think we're seeing a real unbalanced market. And over time, although I think the entire industry will lift all boats, I do think that Adidas is just one bit of good news away from becoming a huge catch up trade. So CRISPR Therapeutics has the money, Intellia has Jennifer Doudna, but what does Adidas have other than the fact that it's cheaper? Despite being valued a lot cheaper than their peers, Adidas actually has better revenues than most of in the industry. And not only that, they recently disclosed much better revenue growth than their peers. And because of that, the stock is now five times cheaper than major rival Intellia, and that's on a price to sales ratio, which is often the best way to judge how expensive growth stocks are. We've spoken about how Intellia trades at a premium due in large to their recent trial results. However, Adidas is undergoing trials of their own and given that they're pretty much using the same technology as Intellia, it's pretty likely we'll see positive data on their upcoming trials and there's an update expected this month. So what is Adidas working on? Well, one of their free trials is called Edit 301 and that's a competitor to CRSP's sickle cell treatment. And like CRISPR Therapeutics, Adidas is also looking to expand those trials to test it on beta thalassemia. So that space is highly competitive. However, the other two advanced trials that Adidas are working on are really super exciting ocular treatments aimed at curing multiple types of blindness. The company also has very early stage trials within their oncology pipeline. And despite competition from CRISPR Therapeutics, this is a space where Adidas does actually have a bit of an advantage having signed a collaboration agreement with pharma giant Bristol Myers. So that's a bit about Adidas, but perhaps their X factor or competitive advantage actually lies in their intellectual property because the company not only holds the most patents in the gene editing industry, but they recently extended partnerships with the likes of MIT and Harvard. And that gives Adidas exclusive rights to CRISPR technologies developed by these two schools until 2024. Similar to Intellia and CRSP, Adidas has its own advantage, so it's kind of up to you how you rank the importance between things like strong finances, management team, and intellectual property. If this technology is as revolutionary as we all hope, then I believe the market will be big enough for all three companies, so perhaps their biggest threat is actually next generation gene editing tools that might prove to be better than CRISPR technology. However, right now, these three stocks are currently the leaders within gene editing, and if they move fast enough, then they will continue to grow quickly and then they can use that financial strength to acquire their competition, very similar to how Facebook and Visa continue to dominate their industries. So I've covered three gene editing stocks in this video, but I have got a lot more information on all three. So just drop me a comment, let me know which one you're most interested in. I'll try and do a deep dive on it. 
If I get no comments, then screw it. I'll just do something random like Boeing and nobody wants that. If you haven't subscribed yet, then you have a wonderful opportunity to put a big smile on my face. If you click like and subscribe, my phone and I will be buzzing and I'll keep bringing you top investment ideas. I hope you enjoyed the video. All the best and remember, your money should be working for you, not the other way around. <laughs>